And now it's time for development debates. We dig deeper into some of the questions shaping the future and present of China. Today, we'll see Chinese experts debate if the Chinese central bank's new monetary policies will benefit small companies. It's not an exaggeration to say that China's state-owned banks are some of the richest in the world. These banks can easily earn money through the government-regulated low deposit rates and high loan rates. However, it doesn't mean that these banks are offering enough loans to all these Chinese companies. State-owned banks fear that small companies are less likely to repay their debts, so they make it hard for them to get loans. They'd rather lend money to China's state-owned enterprises. Statistical data from the central bank shows the total amount of social financing has exceeded 10 trillion yuan, or about 1.6 trillion U.S. dollars by the end of the first half of this year. It has increased by $67 billion compared to the same time last year. Unfortunately, most of this money doesn't go to micro and small companies. Earlier in April of this year, the central government announced to reduce 2% of the reserve requirement ratio for banks, who are lending money to micro and small companies. The Chinese central bank believes this could help solve the financing difficulties of micro and small companies. Then in June, the central bank announced it would knock off another 0.5% from the ratio. The Chinese central bank's new monetary policy has caused fierce debate between experts. An article posted by financial commentator Bi Fu supports a reduction in the reserve requirement ratio. Bi said that the Chinese government has already announced that it will not increase the money supply to stimulate the country's slowdown economic growth. But the government does know the potential risk of the economic downturn. So instead of implementing a large-scale economic stimulus plan, the central bank would use more precise policies to boost the economy. B thinks reducing the reserve requirement ratio for micro and small companies can achieve that goal. B said the benefits can be seen from the declining interest rates for internet finance products. Its interest rates have already plunged from its climax of 8% last year to today's 4.8%. B said it proved the central bank's policy has forced money to flow from the virtual to the real economy. However, financial commentator Yetan doesn't support B's idea. Ye wrote on her blog that reducing the reserve requirement ratio for small companies cannot solve the fundamental issue. The high debt repayment risk for these companies still exists. Ye believes the reduced reserve requirement ratio won't encourage banks to lend their money to micro and small companies. Ye said the rational thing for Chinese banks to do is to say that they'll lend money to micro and small companies. Once they get the money from the central bank, they can lend that money to large SOEs. This method would let state-owned banks earn much more profits than they would if they lended to micro and small companies. Meanwhile, lending money to large SOEs would undertake fewer risk. Ye also pointed out the decreasing interest rate of internet finance products was not caused by the central bank's new policy. It's not a sign of money being transferred from the virtual to the real economy. Instead, reducing reserve requirement ratios has given banks enough money for interbank lending. The interbank lending rate has dropped from last June's 13 percent to only 3 percent at present. Ye criticized the central bank for reducing reserve requirement ratios that only benefits state-owned banks but nothing else. The good thing is that the central bank has already noticed the negative impact of reducing reserve requirement ratios. Recently, the central bank's report admitted the policy would cause problems in the long run. The Chinese central bank should figure out if they need to keep intervening in the market by administrative power or letting the market itself solve the issue.